Okay guys, so one of the next things we're gonna do before we put the heads on is we pretty much know what the uh, compression ratio is gonna be on this thing, but we wanna verify all of these different variables here. Now with your combustion chamber volume, one of the things that we do is we have this uh, we have this barrette and we fill it with liquid. This is a long tube. This this tube here goes all the way up. It's about three feet tall. And this tube, if you take a look at it, this tube has lines on it that's marked in CC increments, and we fill it all the way up to the zero point. And then we just open up our little valve down here. The only way we can really check to see if we have what size of chamber we have rather here is to put liquid in it. Now we just, the CC kit comes with a little piece of plexiglass with a hole in it. I actually made this one because it was a lot cheaper to buy it at a hardware store and drill a hole in it. Now once we get to that point, we just open up our valve here and one of the things you want to do is make sure your head's perfectly level here. So we're going to open up this valve and you're going to see that we are going to fill that chamber. And now, of course, make sh obviously make sure your valves are seated and your spark plug is in there. But we're just going to fill this up until we come up to the top of the plate. And we're getting close here. The bubble is almost gone here. And you can see that bubble disappearing. Boom! A little more. Done. Okay. So now we've got that chamber full of liquid and if we look at our bread here it's marked in cc's and if we go right up i don't know how well you can see this but i can see the numbers on here and if i look at the numbers on here i am sitting right at 74 cc's which is exactly what we measured on the rest of them so our CC measurement here, this chamber is holding 74 cc's of liquid, which means it's displacing 74 cc's. Now that's going to be one of the factors we use to calculate our compression ratio. Well, our dish in our piston is also a factor in compression ratio. So you want the engine level here, and you want to be careful. You don't want to overfill this and get alcohol down the sides of the piston. We've got our piston right at TDC here, and we've got the, the engine really close to being level. So we're just going to take and we're going to slowly fill up the dish. We want to be careful not to go get too crazy here. So we want to slowly fill up that dish. So we've got the engine perfectly level and we filled that dish up with liquid. And so now we know what the CC of our dish is. So if we read our barrette after we filled the piston, we have 30 cc's. So the dish in the top of the piston is 30 cc's and my combustion chamber down here is 74 cc's. To calculate compression ratio, we're gonna add those two together. Okay, so another check that's really important for a compression ratio, guys, is we need to know um, whether or not our pistons are gonna have any kind of interference problems with the valves and so what we do is we take some putty we call this clearance putty and we're gonna we're gonna pack it into these valve reliefs here now you want to stay away from the edge you don't want this this putty getting down in next to the piston there because then you're gonna have to pull the piston out and clean it off and it's gonna be a big old hassle but we do want to put putty on these valve reliefs here because we want to know how close to that piston there's a couple ways to do this i like to use the clearance putty because it seems to be really effective and you want to kind of pack it down so it sticks to the piston here you don't want this coming off and then of course when you put your head on here we're going to assemble the valve train and so forth and then we're going to rotate our engine but what what you want to do is you want to put some some engine oil on the valves because we don't want the valves sticking to this putty we want the 
we want the putty to stick to the piston. So we'll put a little dab of, we'll get this packed onto the piston here, keeping it away from the edge as much as possible. And then we will, we're going to install our head and temporarily install the valve train on this cylinder so that it actuates the valves. And then we're going to look at our, our, our clearance here. All right, now we'll take the head. Now we're going to do this without the head gasket on, and we're going to add the thickness of the head gasket into our measurement here. Okay, guys, so we've got our Play Doh in. We temporarily set our valve train up with our two push rods, and also what I did is I in temporary installed some solid lifters here. This cam is hydraulic that we're using, but this set of lifters is a set of hydraulic lifters that I had laying around. And so we're not actually going to run those on the engine, but we are going to use them because you don't want to use a hydraulic lifter because you don't want any movement here. You want this to be solid so that it opens the valves. And then we're just going to take and we're going to rotate this engine two complete revolutions so that these valves open and close and the idea is they're they're going to squish the putty and then we'll pull the head off and measure the putty and see what we got all right so let's go two complete rotations of the crankshaft and then we'll take it back apart and you're going to watch your valves here you're going to see them open there's the intake valve and now you will see the exhaust valve open. And there it goes. I can feel it squishing that putty. Okay. So right there, we're going to loosen those rockers back up. And we'll get the head back off. We'll remove our cylinder head and see what we got here. So you can see we had oil on the valves and that did a really good job of keeping this from sticking to the cylinder head. Now, just as I suspected, if we look at the Play-Doh here and we'll measure this, this engine has a very mild cam. It doesn't have a lot of lift and so we got a gob of piston to valve clearance there, which is good. That's what we want. But you can see where the valves hit it. The valve came in here and it came in here and it just barely squished the putty. But And we can measure that. Now this flat spot up here, that's the quench area of the head. That's where the head comes close to the piston. You really don't have to worry about that because that's um, there's a big dish here and that's really not, that's a fixed um, area. That doesn't, that area doesn't move. It's the flat spot of the head. The valves are what we're worried about because they move and interact with the piston. Well, you can see from this, we just get a little bit of that oil off there. You can see the imprint of the valve here. It just barely touched that putty. Not only that, we have the thickness of the gasket that we still got to add in there. So we got quite a bit of clearance here. And that's good. We just want to make sure that we don't have any piston to valve contact. I knew we wouldn't because of the lift of this cam. But it's something that you always need to check. So if we take and we cut that putty right there at the thinnest spot where that valve hit it. You can take that off and you can see that's the imprint of the valve right there. We got that much piston to valve clearance plus we're going to add the gasket in there. We got gobs of clearance here. Not going to be any kind of clearance issues. Same thing on the other valve we just take and carefully cut that off and we look at the imprint of the valve which it's a little thinner on this one but the imprint of the valve is right there but we still have all of that clearance there plus the thickness of the gasket I'm not even gonna bother measuring it because it look, looks like about 250,000 so we got like a quarter inch of piston to valve clearance and that's basically it and the nice thing about that clearance putty is it comes off it doesn't leave any residue it, everything is still nice and clean here so so that is piston to valve clearance and it's just something you need to check for those of you that are going to have you know especially with 
if you're installing a really large camshaft in your build you definitely want to check that if you have a high lift cam because you could have clearance issues but like I said on this one we're golden okay guys so now that we have verified the compression ratio of our engine it came out to about 9.2 to 1 which is perfect for a pickup truck that's gonna possibly pull a trailer and run on the street uh, consistently now we can start thinking about putting our cylinder heads on now there's a couple things we got to talk about on the gaskets here Ford cooling systems the direction of the flow of the coolant in pretty much all of these Ford V8s including the FE engine is actually directed by the head gaskets the head gaskets are directional as far as the water passage outlets go and the thing is if you get these on backwards the back of your engine is not going to get any coolant and you're going to overheat your engine instantly so this is really critical so we've got our head gasket here and you want to make sure of course your new dowel pins are in the engine here and make sure that the deck of the block is perfectly clean you don't want any uh, oil or, or solvent or anything on here it's got to be clean now if you look at the Felpro gaskets they have it looks like they have a front side and a back side which they do but on these Ford gaskets you will always see the word front up here where there is no water jacket it is solid the back of the gasket is always going to have an open jacket now the thing is in order to get these on correctly the direction of the gasket as far as this way or this way doesn't make any difference what makes a difference is the end to end regardless of which way the gasket is sitting on the on the block either this way or this way and keep in mind one bank is going to sit this way with these this pattern showing up and the other bank is going to sit this way with this solid pattern in order to get the open section to the back of the of the engine so what we're going to do is we're going to take our gasket we're going to make sure that the closed portion is to the front of the engine here so it's blocking off that passage and my open passage back here the open part of the gasket is going to go to the back now on this particular bank what you'll notice is the pattern that's on the head gasket is facing down but since the gaskets are the same when we get to the other bank you'll notice that the pattern is facing up either way the word front is right here where it's blocked off and the back of the gasket is open this is going to ensure that your engine gets the coolant flow properly very critical on Ford's to make sure you get this okay so once you get your gasket on then we can just carefully take our cylinder head uh, heads are ready we can carefully take and set our cylinder heads on top of the, the block and again these dowels here are going to locate your head and get it set on the engine that's the the cylinder head is on the engine and it is ready to rock and roll all right so we've got our cylinder heads on we got our new bolts in we got them torqued another thing that is probably a good idea is you want to test fit your your uh, push rods it it was quite a chore to find the right length push rod here we had to we have a checking push rod that we put in here and we checked the height with the rockers bolted down and we finally come, came up with the right length push rod the stock push rods won't work because the roller lifters are quite a bit taller but anyway we've got the right push rod in now and we don't have any lash here but we do have clearance into our lifter so we're in the plunger of all the hydraulic lifters so everything looks good keep in mind the push rods actually go through the intake manifold on this engine there's a hole in the intake so we have to take the rocker shaft assemblies back off to get our intake on so we'll do that and then the next step is to fit the intake on this engine okay guys so we've got our rocker assemblies removed and also before you put your intake gaskets on you want to put some silicone sealer around the water jacket area before you lay your gaskets on there and then you just take your gaskets and the gaskets actually have provisions here that kind of lock it into your head gasket 
So you just set this thing on there like that and this is going to kind of hook into your the lip of your head gasket here. It fits right down in like that and those are designed to like cause that gasket to click into place and I always like to put a couple bolts in it here too just to get the gasket to adhere to that silicone sealer and we'll do the same thing on the other side click our gasket into place here and now we'll let that set up on that sealer. I'll put a, I'm going to put a couple of 3 8 bolts and washers here. Okay, so we've got these four bolts just snugged up, just barely snug against the gasket, enough to hold it on there and get that to set up. We'll let that set for a while, then we'll get that intake on. Okay, so you can see I I like to use the black RTV around the water here because it seems to seal the coolant really good. But you want to merge these two. We've got our thick bead of silicone here with the ultimate, the RTV gray. And just make sure this area here where it could leak is all covered. And then, of course, we're going to take our intake and set it straight down on there. Michael's intake, we decided to use the old one because it was in really good shape. It wasn't eaten out in the water jackets or anything, so we cleaned it up. It doesn't look perfect, but it looks pretty good. And then you're going to take your intake, and you're going to set it straight down on there. You want to look at your bolt holes and make sure you line everything up. You want to try to get it as close as you can to those bolt holes. You don't want to smear any of this silicone. So we're going to get that on there, get the bolt holes lined up, and you can see our silicone is kind of squishing out, and that will be even more so once we get the the bolts in it and torque them to specs. So next we're going to take our bolts, get our bolts in there and, and torque these down. Okay guys, so now that we got the intake set on there, we got our bolts in and we just hand, tight, uh, hand tightened them. We don't have them uh, torqued yet. Also with Aluminum intakes, it's very important to make sure that you have a washer on here. The factory manifold to cast iron has a washer anyway, but it's really critical on aluminum. We're going to torque this in a couple of steps here. First, we're going to go through the torque sequence, and we're just going to snug these up. The sequence starts in the middle, and you can look this up online. And we're going to just go through the sequence and snug. We're not going to go all the way to our 30 pounds. It's a 30 pound sequence. And basically it's a staggered sequence from the center to the outside. And you can look it up online. It's pretty simple. I've got it sitting here next to me, but I think you guys are smart enough. You can actually look that up and figure this out. I don't think I really need to show you that. And again, I'm not going to full torque here. I'm just snugging these. So the second round here, we're going to want to go in sequence until we get to 30 foot-pounds. It doesn't take much to get to 30 here. That's it right there. You want to definitely don't want to over torque these. So just go down in sequence. That's my click right there. L. Brock recommends 30 foot-pounds on these in sequence and it should be golden. These are torquing up real nice. Battery. 
our last one here. Thirty pounds. Now, what you want to do is go back and make sure that they're all torqued at thirty. You don't have to do this in sequence because they should already be torqued. So you just go back and hit them again. Make sure you get your thirty pounds. You didn't miss anything. I'm pretty sure we didn't, but you always want to double check yourself. And we are there. 30 foot pounds, your intake's on. Always zero out your torque wrench here. Never leave it on. Up to your torque spec. Now that we got the intake on, we will move on. Next thing is our rockers. Now, real important, we've already established our push rod length and all of that. We have, make sure that this. Uh, oil shield plate is in here. That's really important. So that's going to go on just like that. And then of course your rockers. Okay guys, so now we've got our push rods in. We've got lube on top of all the valve tips. We've got lube on both ends of the push rod. Now before I lay my rocker on there, this is pretty important. You want to take a light and look down in your push rod bores here and you want to make sure that that push rod is sitting on the lifter. So you, it, it's pretty important that you get that push rod on that lifter. So just take a light, look down there, verify that each one is sitting on the lifter. And these are. Oh, this one's not. <laughs> See, this is why we got to do this. This one's not either. Get them on the lifters down in there. And of course, once we've verified that we're on our lifters, take our rocker assembly. Now your rocker assembly, make sure you put a little oil on these bolts and you got to kind of work these rockers on here and get all of your push rods located where they need to be. We want to get all the push rods into the end of the rocker arm here, into the cup of the rocker arm. Then we can just kind of snug our bolts up here get them started and we are in business okay guys so next now that you got your rockers in uh, shaft on the next step is to torque them now the the service manual says 45 foot-pounds on these this is a 3 8 bolt and it it has a pretty significant torque on it we don't want these coming loose but we want to do this in two steps. You don't want to go all the way to 45. That's my advice. I would go to 30 pounds first, which is what I'm going to do. And we're going to start it in the middle. And we're going to work our way to the outside. We're just going to go 30 pounds. And then we'll step it up to 45, which is our final torque. You want to pull that down evenly. I don't like to go all the way to the full torque. So now we'll set our wrench for 45. And we'll do it again. It's important that you follow the torque steps and the procedures. And, and I always reference back to what Ford says on these engines because this I mean they engineered the thing so I'm gonna go by what they say go ahead and verify make sure they're all torqued and that's it your rocker shaft is set up um, you can see that we don't have any lash here we don't have any slop but you can see that the plunger and the lifter I've got some play there so I'm in the travel of that plunger you can see that moving and that's true for all of these. We've got our valve adjustment. Even though this is non-adjustable, we figured out the length of push rods that we needed and it actually worked out pretty good. Okay, so we'll do the rocker shaft on the other side. I won't insult your intelligence by doing that on camera, but once we get that done, we'll move on. And I did talk to Michael and we are gonna paint this intake. I don't like the glass bead FE intakes because they have that exhaust crossover in them. 
and man I've seen glass beads just I've seen guys actually ruin engines because the glass beads get trapped in there so I just I, I won't do that but we are gonna we'll make it look nice it's gonna look really cool when we're done so once I get the other rocker shaft on we'll come back and and finish buttoning this thing up but other than that it's basically just a matter of buttoning all this stuff up I don't really want to put any of the accessories on I ordered a water pump for it today and I've got the MSD ignition coming but before I put any of that stuff on we're I'm going to get this fit into the run stand now I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of fabrication uh, to get this thing into the run stand I'm not gonna put that on the video because that's not stuff that would really do you any good um, my run stand is homemade it's custom made and it doesn't match anything that you would ever have but I am gonna to have to do uh, some fabrication to get this thing to fit my run stand is basically set up for a small block Chevy I thought about using that that big heavy duty thing but I think what I'm gonna do is try to fit it into this one here because I think it'll be just more feasible I can do a little bit of fabrication and I did some measuring and it will fit so once I get that in there then I'll come back and we'll button this thing up and fire it up get her running okay guys so just a quick note here about the the torque converter we're gonna we got to get the bell housing from the customer because the starter mounts into the bell housing here um, but keep in mind before you put the flex plate and the torque converter on there's a there's a plate that goes back here you can see this plate right here so we got to make sure that we get that plate on there also uh, we're not going to put the transmission on here the reason I have the torque converter bolted up is you don't want to put the starter on and just crank the flex plate without the torque converter bolted to it because I learned the hard way a long time ago that that starter will bend the crap out of this flex plate if the torque converter is not hooked to it so the only reason we have the torque converter is because we have to engage the starter and fire this thing up so but we are getting there um, once I get the bell housing then I'm gonna flip this thing around and we're gonna mount it over there in the run stand so anyhow guys I, I think I'm gonna cut the video off there I know this was a lot of little detaily type things but the video is approaching 30 minutes and and I've learned that you don't want to really go any longer than that so um, uh, make sure that you ask any questions comments below i appreciate you watching and in our next video we should have this thing fired up and running thank you for watching and i will talk to you very soon i promise